In this episode, I'm going to give a review of the Godox V1 Pro speed light. It's a combination type of hybrid speed light that's very special for certain types of shooting. So what I'm going to do is show its hybrid cousins here, which is the 8100 and also the TT600. Very common speed light from Godox. They also have other speed lights of similar power and similar features. So I'm going to be comparing the V1 Pro to these, and it is a hybrid. One thing that you'll notice is that the V1 Pro has a round head on it. So that's very different from the rectangular heads that you have on typical speed lights. So that round head is very typical of a mono light like the 8100 Pro. So using those other two lights as a comparison, then we can really see how the V1 Pro really stacks up. So let's first talk about price and then I'll get into some of the specifics with some of the test results and then we'll start talking about who this is made for and what conditions. Now the V1 Pro does cost about $330 US and that's a little bit higher than what you have for the 8100 which costs about $300. Now, this does more, it is a hybrid flash, but when you take a look at just your very, very basic speed light, the TT600, that only costs $65. Now there are some major differences between these lights and that's why this is priced somewhat commensurate with what it does, but also that's why it's important to realize what you'd be using this light for and if it would suit your particular photographic needs. The first test is the light shape and that's by testing blooms. Now I've done some testing on this by testing the all three of these lights at two feet and six feet away from a wall so that we can take a very close look at the bloom and some other telling things. All of these were tested at the flash zoomed at 28 millimeters and we can see that at two feet the V1 Pro is very similar in its shape to the AD1 Pro. We can see that there's round soft good fall off. When you compare that to just the basic speed light, the TT600, then of course you have a much harsher looking bloom, but that's very typical because the TT600 really works well for bouncing. It's not really meant for shooting straight on. Sure you can, and there's diffusers you can buy for it, but most of the times when you're using a basic speed light like this, whether you're using it for real estate photography or even doing events when you're inside, a lot of times you're going to be bouncing it. So when it comes to shooting straight on. When we look at the V1 Pro, it has a very soft bloom. You can see that just at two feet away. When we zoom out here and we take a look then at six feet away and we take a look at the test results, we can see that once again the V1 Pro is very similar to the AD100 Pro and the TT600 actually isn't that bad, but you can really start seeing some fall off problems around its far outer edges and all of these, by the way, had a little bit of purple fringing at the very far outer edges. And that's somewhat typical shooting against somewhat of a colored wall. But the one thing that was not really in spec was when we take a look at the color temperature of the V1 Pro. We can see that the V1 Pro is casting a much cooler color temperature than the other lights. So when we take a look at all these shot in manual Kelvin, we can see that we're pretty much spot on for doing a 5000 Kelvin from the 8100 Pro and the TT600, but the V1 Pro is measuring much, much cooler. Now something that the V1 Pro does have that most speed lights don't have is a modeling lamp. That's a feature that you would typically find on the mono lights like the 8100 Pro and it is adjustable too from just the back screen of the V1 Pro so you can adjust it in little increments to get a lot more power out of it. And it is warmer than the flash, but when you're flashing, you're really not going to see the modeling light. You might see a little bit if you're using a lot of low power. But the question comes in though of why you would want a mono light on a speed light because this light where it really excels isn't that you would necessarily be using it all the time for off camera flash because some of its strengths is when you use it on the camera. So let's talk about some of that next. The next test is a bounce test. And this is where with other reviews that I've done, I take the light and I put it up near a ceiling to bounce it on one side of the room. And then when we go to the other side of the room, there's a light meter that's measuring how much light then was shed. How well did this light bounce? How well did it perform? Shooting straight on is one thing, but really are you gonna lose a lot of light when you bounce? So this is kind of a more telling thing. Instead of having just one straight beam hitting something far away, bouncing is more 
are diffused. So when we take a look at the results here of what the power measured was when we did this bounce test, if we take a look at the 8100, which was the most powerful, it came in at about a quarter power. It was at 4.7. That's where it was measuring. If we were to use on the light meter 1 60th of a second ISO 400. So it measured at an aperture of about 4.7. And that was a little bit higher than when we take a look at the V1 Pro, which was only 4.2. So its closest competitor was off about, eh, about half a stop. Also, when we take a look at the TT600, that had a better result than the V1 Pro measuring at 4.5. When we go to full power, we can see similar results with the 8100 at the 8.4. It measured 8.4 as far as the aperture. V1 Pro was an even aperture of 8. And then the TT600 still measured a little higher than the V1 Pro at 8.1. Now, some of this is almost definitely because of that softer light that's coming out of the V1 Pro. So the bloom tests showed that, yes, we have great fall off, amazing fall off for a speed light, but it does seem to be sacrificing a little bit of power because of that, especially when it comes to bouncing and we're already dispersing and falling off so much light before we ever hit the bounce. Another important factor is battery and recycle times. Now, what's interesting with the V1 Pro is that you can interchange the batteries between it and the AD100 Pro. It's something that Godox doesn't advertise, but I was able to interchange the batteries between each of those lights, had no problem whatsoever. The ratings are the same. The one thing though that is different is unique with the V1 Pro battery is that it has a USB-C charging port on the side of the battery so that you never have to take the battery out to charge it. You can just take the entire unit, plug in a USB-C to your wall outlet, and then you're charging your speed light. Now using basically the same battery as the 8100 Pro means that the V1 Pro is going to have faster recycle times than your typical speed light. So it's a much more powerful battery. So when we take a look at those recycle times, when we're looking at the V1 Pro and the 8100, the recycle times that I was measuring were between 1.5 and 1.8 seconds. And that's really fast compared to the TT600 where testing just equally at full power and a full charge on the batteries that were in there, it was close to five seconds. So typical speed light, it's gonna be many seconds if you're using full power to get your next recycle before you can take another shot. But similar to using the mono light, the 8100 Pro, the V1 Pro has a very fast recycle time down to about just a second and a half and that is at full power. Something though that is unique when it comes to the V1 Pro is that it has a detachable supplemental flash. They call it a sub flash or the SU1. And that's on the front here. And you can take this on or you can take this off so that it's just another accessory. You don't have to leave it on there. But it kind of works as another fill flash that when you're bouncing, this can then flash forward. So it can act as an extra fill. And that power is adjustable. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in any of the wireless modes, so you can't use it for off-camera flash. It's really meant for just when you're doing on-camera flash. So for typical event photography or doing weddings and moving really fast, mostly indoors, because once again, you're gonna be bouncing, then this fill flash could work. The SU-1 could help out a little bit. The one thing though is that by itself it costs about $50. Now it does come with the V1 Pro, but it would be nice if there was a model that came or some type of package that didn't have that with it. So that would lower the cost from the 330 that it is now higher than the 8100 Pro, which is just 300. So that would be nice to be able to drop it, let's say down to about like $280 US if we didn't have the SU1 attached to it. Another feature that is unique to the V1 Pro compared to just your basic everyday speed light is that it does have the ability to work as a transmitter in your hot shoe. So you can control other flashes with it. But quite honestly, I don't really find that feature that useful, especially since if you're gonna be using off-camera flash and you're gonna be using other flashes, then you would just pop on an X-Pro trigger, one of the Godox X-Pro triggers, which is much less expensive than using a speed light that costs $300 just to work as your transmitter. Also, no matter what you do, when you set this to be a transmitter, 
better, it's always going to be flashing here as well. So kind of an annoying thing, and that's typical of some other speed lights where they also try to add this feature of being a transmitter. Now, I've never found that feature to be useful. You might thought I'd mention it, but it's not something I highly recommend. Once again, I would just recommend using the X-Pro trigger in your hot shoe for your transmitter, and then use these as receivers. Now, similar to other higher end speed lights, it does have the common features you would expect like high speed sync and also what they call multi-mode or the stroboscopic effect where it can fire off multiple flashes. So it's got advanced features like that. Now, something though that is different using this type of a speed light, the V1 Pro is since it has this round head, it can use the same accessories that you would put on the round head of the AD100 Pro. So all those different little magnetic snap on accessories can still be used on the V1 Pro and the 8100 Pro interchangeably. Now some of those could be useful if you're going to be using it for off-camera flash. There's many other modifiers that you could buy, but if this is going to be used for, let's say, events or even some photojournalism, yeah, they've got a dome diffuser that can just pop right on. It's also got some fun stuff and also some barn doors that you can pop on there as well. And that leads up to wondering, well, who would be using the V1 Pro compared to these other lights? So if you're gonna be using nothing but off-camera flash, then you're really gonna be looking at mono lights. And you've probably seen other reviews that I've done for the 8200, the 8300, 8400. And if you have my lighting guide for real estate, you know how those all compare. And also if you've taken my course, by the way, on real estate photography, then you know that those can be used in different ways for different situations for off-camera flash, especially especially for real estate. And by the way, I have links to all that down in the description for this video, as well as links to all this gear as well. So you're really taking a look though, when it comes to the usage of the V1 Pro, not necessarily being off camera. Sure, you could use it that way, but its strength really is on camera. And something that's very lightweight and very small because it can be folded down, it can be very small footprint putting it into a bag. So if you're doing events and you're doing a wedding, you have a very small pack with you that you need to quickly change things out, the accessories for the V1 Pro would work quite well well. So also just being on location, doing maybe some street photography, whatnot, but really more so events that are going to be indoors because its strength comes from being able to bounce and then also having the supplementary flash, the SU-1, that's on the front of it for doing fill. Outside, this of course doesn't mean anything because you're just going to be flashing into the air and nothing's going to happen. So really its strength is when you're doing anything on camera, even if it's facing forward here and you're not using the supplemental flash, doing stuff stuff outdoors, you don't have to worry about harsh light because this is going to give you really great fall off. So even using it like this, which we would never think of really when we think about doing something like good wedding photography or even some sports photography close-up stuff where the flash would have an effect, this will because it's got that great fall off and it's very soft. As far as the cons, there are two big ones with the V1 Pro that I saw, and I don't know if they would necessarily stop me from buying it, but the one was obviously the color temperature. That color temperature was much cooler coming out of the V1 Pro than it was the other lights. And I can attest to using these other lights as well, the 200s, the 300s, the 400s in my daily work. I see consistent results out of those. This one was the odd man out, which means that if I was gonna use the V1 Pro within my current setup, I really couldn't because the color is so off. Yeah, I could use a gel on it, but that's just not worth it. I would just buy another light. So that's one of the biggest concerns I have, but on its own as a standalone light or using other V1 Pros in the setup, then the light would be equal and I don't have to worry about trying to balance all the color temperatures from the variety of lights that I might have set up. The other con was also when it came to the price. This is higher priced than the 8100, so if I'm gonna be using off-camera flash, this would be my choice, not just because of color temperature, but also because of price. But if I were to be doing a different type of genre, if I didn't do just real estate photography, which is my primary income, then I would think about the V1 Pro for doing weddings, doing events, doing a lot of uh, stuff like the photojournalism, things that are fast action moving that I really wanna have an on-camera flash for, then the V1 Pro really does fit that bill.
And that, if I were to list the various pros of the V1 Pro, it's simply that. It's really an all-around good on-camera flash that can give you the benefits of using a mono light and not be restricted to some of the downfalls and some of the shortcomings that a speed light has. So depending on the type of work that you're doing, the V1 Pro may fit your bill. And once again, I have links to this down in the description for this video, as well as other pertinent information that I think you would find useful.